Have you ever seen a pilot walk out of the flight deck mid-flight and we're like, who's flying the airplane? Well, you're not alone. Welcome back aviators, glad to have you back ready to consume some aviation content. If you're new to my channel, my name is Yaro and I take the mystery out of the aviation industry. So consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Before we get started, I want to make the big announcement that we officially launched our coffee business and our first product is Coffee Tap. It's real specialty coffee that you brew in a cup. It's perfect for camping, fishing, anyone who loves the outdoors. It's great for travelers, especially pilots and flight crew. And its main benefit is its 12 month shelf life. So check out our website at invitocoffee.com. I will link it in the description box below. Let us know what you guys think and I hope you try your first coffee tab soon. Now let's get back to the episode. This week, I'm going to explain to you if pilots are allowed to leave the flight deck in flight and who is even allowed up there in the first place. First, we need to start with a brief history of the flight deck door. Flight deck doors have been around since the 1950s, but prior to 9-11 the rules were quite relaxed. Flight crew could enter or leave the flight deck in flight at will, or invite their friends or family members for a visit. After 9-11 though, everything changed and the flight deck door became an impenetrable barrier between the cabin and the flight deck with strict rules of who could enter and leave the flight deck in flight. It became mandatory for larger aircraft to be equipped with an approved flight compartment door that was able to resist penetration by small arms fire and grenade shrapnel. Because maybe somebody could bring a grenade on board? And the door has to resist forcible intrusions by unauthorized persons. This door had to be capable of being locked and unlocked from either pilot seat. Controlling access to the flight deck became the highest priority and ensuring that legitimate control of an aircraft can be maintained. 9-11 showed everybody that an airplane can be turned into a weapon. That's why the opening of a flight deck door in flight is strictly regulated. So who is allowed to enter the flight deck in flight? In the air, procedures vary from airline to airline and region to region, but the principle is that only those with legitimate need can get granted access to the flight deck. Beyond the pilots at the controls, this will include relief, check, and training pilots. Entry can also be extended to specifically authorized employees of the operator, including pilots, flight attendants, and maintenance personnel. In flight, the door should always be locked unless there's a legitimate need to open it, and if open, it should only remain open long enough for a person to pass through it. There must be SOPs in place for entry and exit from the flight deck from the time the engines are started at the beginning of the flight to when they are shut down at the completion of the flight. Then things changed again after the 2015 German Wings crash, where the captain was locked out of the flight deck by the first officer who killed everybody on board by crashing into the French Alps. The captain had no way to get back into the flight deck because of one event, 9-11. The changes in protocol and security after 9-11 made sure that the flight deck door was always closed and locked and they were designed to be nearly impenetrable. The first officer took advantage of this. Even though entry to the flight deck is made possible by entering the correct code into a keypad that is located outside the flight deck door, anyone intent on taking the airplane down can prevent this from happening. So did the German wings crash suggest that the flight deck door was now too secure? In the aftermath of the crash, some wondered whether there should be some form of override, but it was quickly pointed out that such an override could be easily exploited by a terrorist. Instead, the airlines changed their policies again. So not only did we have strict policies of how to enter and exit a flight deck, now we had to have two people on the flight deck at all times. This would usually be a flight attendant if a pilot had to leave the flight deck and use the bathroom. However, this procedure only lasted a couple of years as the aviation experts and psychologists pointed out that just because you have two people up there doesn't mean you have a secure flight deck, especially if the person is suicidal or worse, a terrorist. Overall, such events are rare. The Aviation Safety Network lists just 14 commercial 
accidents and incidents that were intentionally caused by pilots, including German wings. Instead, the focus moved on to prevention and stopping mentally unstable pilots from being in the controls in the first place and focusing on mental health. Ultimately, the industry has decided that the threat from the outside is greater than the threat from the inside, and we are now back to allowing only one pilot to remain in the flight deck. Now we are in 2019 and can pilots actually leave the flight deck? The answer is yes, but only for physiological reasons, to use the bathroom or stretch your legs, or for concerns in relation to the safety of the flight. The same strict exit and entry procedures are used and we make sure we are not gone longer than necessary. Long gone are the days of pilots chit-chatting with passengers or walking down the aisles to make sure how everybody is doing. So the next time that a pilot leaves the flight deck, know that it's okay. Strict procedures exist to protect the flight deck and there is still one pilot up there flying the airplane. So I hope you enjoyed this video of how and why pilots are allowed to leave the flight deck in flight. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting this channel. Smash like, check out Coffee Tab, and I'll see you in the next episode.